someone tried to steal the famous Graceland mansion from Elvis Presley's family. And it wasn't exactly clear who. The Presley family didn't know, a judge hearing the case didn't know. So our team launched an investigation to figure it out. To recap, this mysterious company claimed the rights to sell Graceland because it allegedly loaned $3.8 million to Lisa Marie Presley. She's Elvis Presley's daughter and died last year. Graceland's deed was apparently the collateral. But Elvis's granddaughter, Riley Keough, felt that something wasn't right, that her mom never borrowed that money. And she filed a claim in court saying that signatures on the loan paperwork were forged. At a court hearing to postpone the foreclosure sale, no one from the company claiming Graceland showed up, and it never filed a single required document with the local deeds office to prove that it had the rights to Graceland, raising the question if it was even real. Our reporters searched multiple public records databases and social media for anyone associated with Nosini Investments and private lending. They found no digital footprint. The only info about it came from court filings in the Graceland case, and there wasn't much. Like, the only addresses listed were P.O. boxes and a post office. Keo, in her claim, said that someone named Kurt Nossany emailed her lawyer, seeking the $3.8 million or they'd sell the mansion. A phone number listed for Kurt in the claim was disconnected. But we got a reply by email, suggesting it was really Gregory E. Nossany that we should be contacting. The night before the hearing to pause the foreclosure sale, the court got a faxed response from that Gregory E. Nossany. It denied Keo's accusation that the loan was fake, and asked that the company be allowed to continue with the sale. The response included a phone number and email for Gregory. Our reporters called and texted, but no one answered. Answered. They also emailed asking for comment and received a response indicating that the company would drop the case after consultation of the lawyers. Keo's claim successfully delayed that sale of Graceland. And just after that, Gregory claimed he was part of a ring of Nigerian identity thieves in clunky Spanish. That confession seemed like it might be the end of the story as authorities began investigating Nasani investments. But our reporters kept digging and the clues suggested someone else was actually behind the scam a grandmother in Missouri. We kept hitting dead ends on the hunt for who was behind Nasani Investments, the company that claimed the rights to sell Graceland, the company that didn't seem to exist. There were two names tied to the attempted sale, Kurt Nasani, who we couldn't find in public records databases, and Carolyn Williams, a name too common to be helpful. But we started to find clues online. First, a Kurt Nasani left a bad review for a local car dealership. Then we found a new Facebook profile for Carloin Nasani, Carolyn misspelled, and that account had left a negative review for a nail salon. That led us down a rabbit hole of drama about this salon, five hours northwest of Graceland. The owners of Envy Nails say that they faced a harassment campaign from seemingly fake reviews and texts, all sent from someone claiming to be Carolyn, a Missouri state investigator. Carolyn was threatening legal action on behalf of a disgruntled salon employee, Rashid Carbon. But Carballo told me that it wasn't him. He wasn't a part of any harassment campaign. That was actually coming from a woman he met at a Starbucks. Her name was Lisa. Now she'd been a customer of the nail salon too, and she had tried to help Carballo with his legal case when the owners of the salon tried to get orders of protection against Carballo to stop the harassment and the texts. Lisa also emailed one of the salon owners about an impending lawsuit and an investigation into the salon. That message contained a letter signed by Carolyn Williams from Missouri's investigation department, which doesn't exist. And that same month, a Carolyn Williams representing Nasani Investments filed a creditor's claim against Lisa Marie Presley's estate. She listed Nasani's address as a P.O. box, the same one that Jeremy said Lisa had provided him during their legal fight with the salon, and a four-minute drive from Lisa's current home. There were other connections to the Graceland scam, too. The same fax number was used to submit documents in the Graceland case and in the nail salon case. The number that Carolyn had used to text the nail salon owners was the same as the fake claim for Presley's loan and on Kurt Nassani's email signature. And one of Nassani Investments' listed addresses is linked to the name and email Lisa currently uses, according to public records databases. Carballo was also living with Lisa at one point, and he told me that he heard her talking on the phone about Lisa Marie Presley, and Lisa told him that she was about to get a couple of million dollars from a foreclosure deal. We discovered that Lisa's been in and out of jails, courts, and prisons for the past 20 years, charged with various crimes. We spoke to her ex-husband, who compared her to Leonardo DiCaprio's con man character in that movie Catch Me If You Can. Her sister Linda, who she lives with now, has faced her own legal issues too. She lured her victims into investing millions in a fake hedge fund and was eventually sentenced to 45 months in prison. While Linda's fake investment company seemed a lot closer to the Graceland scheme than Lisa's fraud history, no evidence linked Linda to Nasani. Linda declined an interview, but we did talk to Lisa 
at her home in Missouri. Lisa denied everything. She said she didn't have a P.O. box, she didn't know any Nasani, and her identity had actually been stolen, she said. We asked about our links to Graceland and the nail salon. She told us, quote, I have no earthly idea what you're talking about. When we followed up later, Lisa actually sent us a cease and desist letter, demanding that we stop reporting on her. Within half an hour of my visit to her house, the Facebook page of Carloin Nasani, the one tied to the surname in the Graceland case that Lisa denied knowing, had been deleted. 